CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... poem, Sir Walter Scott wrote, and come he slow, or come he fast, it is but death who comes at last. The phrase of choice for one of our foremost weekly magazines is, as it must to all men, that we must die is a constant in all our lives. But how, through what agency, and where will we pass to once beyond that gate? That is the open question which will never be answered. The speculation from which stories such as this are spun. Now, I knew it. You knew what? Any time the old man sends me out on a special assignment, that has to be trouble. Not unless you make it. Don't tell me you're here for the same lady, Lucifer. That's right, Michael. Well, that poses quite a problem, doesn't it? mystery drama, War of Angels, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin and stars Anne Williams. It is sponsored in part by Contact, the 12-hour cold capsule. I'll be back shortly with Act One. When the score of your life is toted up, where will you stand? On the side of the angels or the devil. It's a fair guess that very few of us would fall squarely in one camp or the other. We'd probably hover somewhere in the middle and hope that our fate beyond would at least be open to discussion or adjudication. But supposing it had been determined before our demise, not by just one immortal force, but two diametrically opposed, who would win? Let's have Lillian Bryant, publisher and president of Bryant Publications, answer that question for us. Okay, Mary, I have the morning list. Um, tell my daughter I'll call her back. You can inform Norman Whaler I will not pay one cent more for the article, and I want it held to 5,000 words. Oh, I, uh, I can't see Hunt Dixon for next week. Find an open spot. I'll take the call from Brugger, and, um, oh, you can send Mr. Turner right in. Brugger, it's Lillian Bryant. I can't make it. My calendar's jammed. Oh, I agree it's a worthy cause. Of course. You know I'm a sucker wherever children are concerned. Come. No, I, I, I'm listening. You have my full attention. Back somewhere, Bert. Oh, if you want coffee, help yourself. Uh, what do you want me to do? <laughs> Separate like an amoeba? I'll be on the West Coast that weekend. I'll send you a check for $5,000. Just see that some of it filters through the overhead and gets to the kids. Oh, sure it is. <laughs> Forget it, Bert. I just got the circulation figures on action. So did I. I'm taking too much flack from my distributors. They don't want your magazine anymore. It pays its way. <laughs> Not with all the new hikes we've taken. Print, paper, personnel, distribution, pension plans, cost of living. Spare me the doleful roll call. What's the message? Go find another house to publish my brainchild? No other house would take it. And you can't make it on your own. What are you after, Lillian? The magazine. I want you to sell it to me. My, my, we are charitable today. How much? I'll give you 200000 over what you owe me already. I don't owe you anything. That loan was a private one from Walt to me. Correction. Walter Bryant was my husband. And he left me everything when he died. The money came from Bryant Publications, of which I am the owner now. And I'm calling it in. Name your price. I haven't got one, though. Action is my baby. It's my life. It isn't selling. No advertiser will look at it. Brian Publications can carry it. You need it for the press oh, Prestige be damned. I want everything this house publishes to make money. That's what we're in this business for. Well, you know, that wasn't Walt's thinking. Look, Walt was my husband and your friend. But he isn't here anymore. My thinking runs this business now. I'll give you 250 That's my top offer. 
What would you do with it? <laughs> Change it from top to bottom. Cheapen it, you mean? I'd make it sell to the public and to advertisers. I bet you would at that. Well, do we have a deal? <sighs> do I have the opportunity to make a last statement? If you make it short. If only I could make it sweet. Lillian, I've loved you for a long time. I lost you first to Jim Anthony, whom you loved, and second to Walter Bryant, whom you didn't. But Walt was my friend. He believed in me. More than that, he knew that magazine was my mistress, my wife, my children, my whole life. Without it, I had nothing. Look, I won't cry on your shoulder because you know that as well as I do. And it doesn't mean anything to you. So, of course, I'll sell to you. I haven't any other choice. I'm in hock up to my ears. Birds, if you had personal debts, you know you only have to ask no, me. No, no, you would never let me live with you. I'll be hanged if I'll live off you. It's only a matter of good business. Little ever since Jim walked out on you, that's your life, isn't it? You married Walt to the business, knowing he was going to die. You knew Walt intended me to take over, but you muscled me out and left me with one magazine. Now even that you'll take away from me. All right, you can have it. But it'll cost you half a million. <laughs> you strike a hard bargain. For my lifeblood? Take me with it as editor and you can have it for nothing. That's not the deal. Bert, I'm sorry. No, you're not, Lil. Not really. Sorrow is an emotion and iron ladies don't have those. You don't have any feelings anymore. You know how I know? How? Because I don't have any left myself. And to feel is to live. And if we faced it and took a good look at ourselves, we realized that we might as well be dead. But I did love you once, Lil. But oh, I, I could kill that man. Mary, you can get my daughter. I'm ready to talk to her. Okay, Lil. Pull yourself together. We've got something good going for you. Dee Dee Cole. My baby. Dee Dee. If she'll just say one kind word to you. Dee Dee? It's Mom. Oh, honey, I'm so glad you called. Sorry I couldn't get back to you right... Huh? Oh, uh, I thought maybe you... Well, then why did you call? What? Oh, no, how much was it carrying? Oh, well, thank the Lord for that. I'll get my lawyers on it right away. What? Oh, Dee Dee, have a heart and screw your head on straight. I can't just let him walk away from this after I spring him. I've got to talk it out with him. Get him straightened out. Dee Dee, I'm not interfering. I'm only trying to help. Yes, I read you loud and clear. But I'm never going to stop fighting for you. You're my children, and I love you. Just, why do you both hate me so much? Dee Dee? Dee Dee? Busted. Where did I fail? Mary, get me the legal department. I want to talk to Roger Krause right now. <laughs> What's the difference, Mom? It's a free country. If I want to be a pothead, who's to stop me? Me. I won't let my son throw himself away. Oh, for Pete's sake. Will you cut it? Cut what? The silver cord. I'm a big boy now. Oh, not the way you're acting. You're not. I am old enough to make my own decisions. I swore when you stuck your oar in between Sissy and me that that was the end of the apron. Look, I saved your neck then, and I'm trying to save it again. I don't want you to save it. I want you off it. You want me to revoke the bail and send you back to that filthy jail you just got out of? Oh, I don't care. Doesn't matter. Nothing matters since Sissy... Oh, act your age. The girl was older than you. She was beneath your class. And the whole thing was a cut and dried holdup. So I bought her off. <laughs> she was more than willing to settle for that. Now look... I love Sissy. Oh, I'm sure you did. And but... she loved me. Oh, now that's the horse of a different... She was carrying my child. Didn't you care? D didn't you want a grandchild? Now hear this, Deke, and get it through your head. Of course I want grandchildren. But I don't believe for one moment that she was carrying a child. And if she was, <laughs> it's an outside bet that, that she couldn't tell whose it was. She picked 
picked you because she thought you had what she was really after. Money. Well, she has no complaints. She got it. She was well paid. No complaints. Oh, Dick. Son, listen to me. Just in case there really was a child, do you think I would have skimped on providing for it? After all, I had to go through to make do for my own children. The last thing I would ever do is leave any woman in the spot I got left in. You didn't have any problems getting out of it. All you had to do was make it with a boss. Oh, uh, don't you try to cheapen me. Drag me down to the level of your little round-heeled hooker. I never pulled any punches with Walter Bryant. He knew my feelings for your father and all I had to offer. He walked into our marriage with his eyes open. He knew I married him because of you and Dee Dee. Oh, if I followed my own wishes, it would have been Bert Turner I turned to. He might have made me forget Jim. Well, why didn't you? Because I knew he could never provide the things I wanted my children to have. It's a pity you never asked us what we wanted. Oh, oh well, there were precious few complaints from either of you. You both enjoyed the money and the schools and the cars and the opportunities you had. It took a rotten little tramp like your sissy to turn you against me. Will you stop calling her that? I call them as I see them. I call a spade a spade. Okay. Then why don't you take one of your spades and dig your grave the way you did for sissy? Dick, what are you saying? You heard me. She's dead. Why do you think I blew my mind and got myself stoned? Because she's dead. Threw herself on the subway tracks in front of a train. Committed suicide. And it's your fault, Mom. Sissy's dead and you killed her. Oh, no. No. Mary, uh, find Bert Turner right away and have him come straight in. Tell him it's an emergency. I want him to take me somewhere. <laughs> Could you pull back the sheet, attendant, please? Uh, yes. It's her. You all right, Lillian? Just a, a little faint. Take me out of here, Bert. Sure. Come on. It don't have to hold me. I'm all right. Why did you put yourself through that? I had to be sure. Now you know. Get me in a cab and take me home, Bert. All right, Lily, it won't be long now. Just a few more blocks. It doesn't make any difference. Wherever I go, I won't get away from it. Got to stop blaming you, <laughs> So who else can I blame? I didn't realize what a hard, bitter woman I'd become. Empty of love and affection. Feeling. No one who saw you now would think of you like that. My children do. I lost Dee Dee a long time ago, but I never thought that Dee, my little boy, he told me he wanted to see me dead. Oh, Bert, if I could only do it over. If I only had another chance. As God is my witness, may he strike me dead. If I wouldn't do it better. Lillian. Lil, what is it? Lil! Oh, no. Driver! Driver! Get us to the nearest hospital! Fast! The oldest and the commonest prayer in the world. If I could only do it over. If I only had another chance. Well, that seems to be out of Lillian Bryant's hands now. After suffering what seems to be a massive stroke... But the hands in which it does lie are rather surprising ones. And I'm sure you'll agree when I return with Act Two. In the midst of life, we are in the midst of death. Of whom may we seek for succor but of thee, O Lord? Words from the burial service in the Book of Common Prayer run through Bert Turner's bowed head, sitting outside in the emergency waiting room, while inside a team of doctors works frantically to restore the spark of life to Lillian Bryant's body. He is much too absorbed in his own thoughts to notice that he is no longer alone. Not that he would have noticed anyway, for the two who have entered are invisible to mortal eyes. 
by all that's holy. Michael, speak of the devil. Lucifer, what brings you here? To this hospital? I have a pickup. Must be rather important to bring out heavy artillery like you. Couldn't death have handled it on his regular round? And this one is special delivery. Already assigned to us. The old man felt it needed expert handling. Mm. You want to pick up, too? Yes. A little out of your line, isn't it? My principal didn't want us to go through regular channels. Oh, who are you here for? Uh, Lillian Bryant. Also known as Lillian Anthony. Also known by her maiden name, Lillian Bruce. I knew it. You're here for the same lady? Yes. It poses quite a problem, doesn't it? I don't see why, Michael. I've been looking over her dossier. This dame is a real grade-A witch. Strange. But that's not the impression I get from the dossier I was given on the lady. If you'd read mine, you'd have no doubt about her. If you leaf through mine, you'd find out she doesn't really belong in your place. So you have a look. Mm, all right. She hasn't quite crossed over yet. It'll serve to pass the time. Yes. Heaven only knows how long it may take. Careful of the pages. I wouldn't want to seem as just not to a suit. You may find my record a little hot for you. Maybe you'd better put on your gloves. Don't worry. Now, with your permission, I like to concentrate when I read. Subject born May 16, 1939. Married high school sweetheart. Coming down, isn't it? Oh, yes. And I forgot my umbrella. Pardon me, too. Hey, are you working our company, don't you, Miss Bryant? Yes, I do, in the funnel pool. Mm-hmm. I'm Lillian Anthony. Oh, I'm Bert Turner. Oh, hi. Hey, there's a the cab. Come oh. on. Oh, come on where? I'll give you a ride. You don't think I want to be responsible for a pretty girl like you being drowned? So, I'm uh, I'm sorry if I gave you the wrong idea of Mr. Turner. Bert. What wrong idea? Well, I don't think you'd have gone this far out of your way if you'd known I was married and had two babies. Why not? Who takes care of the kids? Uh, my husband. Oh. Let me have a job? Not, um, not just at the minute. He's studying. What? Um, something to do with, with calculators. Good field. Well, we're, uh, just about at your place. And the rain seems to stop, too. I think I'll let the cab go and walk the rest of the way. I'm, I'm sure would like to invite you in for a drink or something. Meet my husband, but... Oh, no, no, no. That's all right. Just get it. Hey, let me help you out. Thanks. Here you go, driver. Well, I don't know how to thank you. Oh, no, forget it. Yeah, I'll walk you to the door. It costs an awful lot for that cab. Ah, oh, forget it. I'm the last of the big spenders. Oh, that sounds like the baby. <laughs> I'd better get in. Oh. What's the matter? I can't get the door open. Well, here, let me help something lying against it. There. Oh, Jim. Jim. Uh, shall I call a doctor? No, no. He's all right. Just drunk. Oh, Jim. I don't know what to say. Uh. Oh, I just don't say anything around the office, please. As you see, my calculator expert isn't exactly something I can count on. friendship between Bert Turner and the Anthony's. A friendship both abused and welcomed by Lillian and her husband. He, because he could always borrow money from Bert. And Lillian, because of the man she loved, she had found only half a man. Then one evening, some three years later, the friendship ended. Hello? Bert? It's Lillian. I just wanted to tell you not to come over tonight. Why? What did I do wrong? <laughs> Nothing, funny man. It's me has been done wrong. Jim, he finally walked out on you. 
He's been gone for three days now. He'll come crawling home. Not this time. He's got a meal ticket. And she doesn't have two kids for him to offer uh, non-support to. Well, I've been a long time waiting for this moment. Oh, no, it's no good, Bert. There's nothing for us. I think I can make you happy, Lil. I could give you love. No, thank you. I tried that. Where did it get me? <laughs> like the song says, I'm through with love. Give me a chance. I am. To get away from me. If I've caught you, Bert, I'm throwing you back. I'm after nothing but big fish from here on in. Hi, Lil. Oh, hello, Bert. You're working pretty late, aren't you? <laughs> I have to. I have to make all the overtime I can. Kids get more expensive as they grow older. No word from Jim? <laughs> Are you kidding? Hmm. How long has it been now? Oh, I don't know. Nearly a year. Why? Why don't you give him the divorce he wants? <laughs> when the time is right, I'll get the divorce and make him pay through the nose. But that's peanuts. I want a lot more than that. Like what? You really want to help me, Bert? Do I have to answer that? All right. Connie Behrens is leaving. I want her job. Mr. Bryant's private secretary? Why not? I know this place inside out. I'm the best typist in the house. And take the fastest dictation. You're a great favorite of his. You could get that job for me. You can't be after him, Lil. Why not? He's already married. <laughs> so? He's not working at it. Lil, you're really going off the track. You don't need to go down that road. You have me, Lil. I'll marry you and take care of your kids Lil, tomorrow. That's out, Bert. I told you that before. You're a good friend and I don't want to hurt you. You and I would never work out. Why not if you gave it a chance? Because you're never going anywhere far enough and fast enough for me. Uh, from now on, I'll claw and cheat and push and struggle till I get right to the top. And look out anyone who gets in the way. Subject now marked her employer as her prey. She couldn't marry him because he was already wed to a wife who was in the terminal stage of a lingering illness. But she did make herself indispensable to him in every way while she bided her time. She shipped her children off to boarding schools and opened her apartment to him. The record player too loud, dear? No. No, it's perfect. You want me to rub your temples so you can really relax? Would you? I have a splitting headache. <laughs> well, you work too hard. Until you came along, it's all I knew how to do. Well, just give me half a chance and I'll teach you how to forget work. I wish... I wish I could really do something in return for all you do for me. You will, Walter, dear. You will, when the time comes. Subject to study two before she finally married the publisher. Six months after his wife's death. Walter Bryant was 61. He lasted eight more years. And on his death, his publications firm was rocked to its foundation. I can't believe it. He's left everything to you, Lil. Lock, stock, and barrel. That's right, Bert. Total control. I mean, the voting stock, the management, the whole business to be run by you. But you don't intend to try to do it, do you? You bet your bottom dollar I do. But you can't. I mean, a woman... Uh, this is tough, brutal business. Takes a man to run it. Oh, what's the matter, Bert? Jealous? Feels shut out. Well, I had expected that... I mean, in many ways, Walter was like a father to me. I'd always understood that when... Mm -hmm. No. You couldn't handle it, Bert. You haven't got the guts. And you have? Just to watch me. You run along to your little magazine. You play with that uh, happy misnomer action. And watch me take over the action here. I'll walk right over anyone who gets in my way. Subject has lived up to her goal since then. Trampling roughshod over employees. Hiring and firing by whim ruthlessly. In her personal life, she's managed to destroy the longest and closest of her friends. The only man who really loved her for herself. She has completely alienated her daughter by trying to turn her into a carbon copy of herself. And last of all, she is directly responsible for the death of the girl her son loved. And has so thoroughly demolished him spiritually 
that he now hates the mother he loved as totally as his sister does. Well, it's quite an indictment, Lucifer. Yes, I'm quite proud of her, Michael. Lillian Bryant really managed to commit them all, wouldn't you say? You mean a certain deadly sin? Exactly. I'll tell you what I think, Lucifer. I think... Oh, just a moment. That's her son now. Let's listen to this. Uncle Bert? Uncle Bert, I... I got here as fast as I could. Oh, hello, Dee. Uh, how is she? Uh, how's Mom? I don't know. They, they haven't come out yet. Is she... Was she, uh... Was she dead when you brought her here, do you think? I can't hold out too much hope, Dee. Oh. She never moved after she collapsed in my arms. Oh, please, no. I... Let me just say something to her. Tell her I didn't mean it. I... I didn't want to see her dead. I... I, I don't hate her, Uncle Bert. I... I love her. I... I want to... Easy now. Easy now. Don't blame yourself. You mustn't blame yourself. And it seems there is at least one person she hasn't completely alienated. A feather in the wind. I'm going to take her now. Not so sad. First of all, have you read my dossier? I glanced through it. I wasn't impressed. No matter how you state it, the facts are still the same. No wonder. Before we make any rash moves, you'd better let me have my innings. Because in spite of your claim, I think the lady more properly belongs with us. And I think I can prove it. Perhaps the Archangel Michael will prove his point. But in a practical sense, it won't really make that much difference to those Lillian Bryant leaves behind. Because, of course... She'll still be dead. Or will she? I shall return shortly with Act Three. It was May West who enlightened history with the apt remark, It ain't no sin if you crack a few laws now and then, just so long as you don't break any. Would that apply in the case of a woman like Lillian Bryant? There's no question she was ruthless, success-oriented, opportunistic, driven, and in the moment of her death, almost totally alone. But had she no saving graces? Let's see if we can discover any now, as we listen to her attorney for the defense, the Archangel Michael. Let's make a comparison of the dossiers that we carry on, Mrs. Bryant. If we keep it short and sweet, Michael, you religious types are always so long-winded. Don't you want to see justice done? I don't believe in justice. It's just a word. She's entitled to her day in court. All right, then let's get on with it. Well, first of all, let us consider the two human beings who are unwittingly sharing this hospital waiting room with us. Sure. But it's a sucker. And the son has a guilty conscience. You'll notice the daughter isn't here. You won't admit that it might be love that brought these two men here. After what she did to them, especially her son. All right. Let's just examine that relationship a bit more closely. You must have read in the dossier I was given of the case. I believe it was page 32. There's a description of how the son, Dick Bryant, came to his mother one evening. Who is it? It's Pink, Mom. Oh, come on in, darling. Oh, this is nice. <laughs> Not out doing the town tonight? I, uh, I, I wanted to talk to you. Oh, come in and sit by me. Um, Mom, uh, did Dad, uh, I don't mean my real father, I mean, um, Uncle Walt, uh, did he, um, well, uh, didn't he leave some sort of a, a trust fund for me? Well, yes, dear. Walter was very generous. He left one for both you and Dee Dee. Very sizable, too. Give you both a good start in life. Yeah. Uh, there isn't any chance I could get mine now, is there? Now? <laughs> Darling, it's in trust until you're through with school. <laughs> well, is there any way I could, uh, you know, uh, borrow against it? Not without consent of the trustee. Well, who's that? It's me. I am. What is it you want this money for? Well, Mom, I... I, I want to get married. Married? At your age? Oh, you must be joking. I'm not 
joking. I love Sissy, and, and we want to be together. And I just for once, will, will you not interfere? Just leave it at that and help me. I can't jump. Just, just leave it at that, Deke. Hmm. You never can, can you? Oh, Deke, son, I'm only thinking of you. Married? I haven't even met the girl. Now, who is she? Sissy who? Well, you wouldn't know her. Well, I'd like to meet her. What's her full name? Sissy Patterson. Did you meet her at college? No, I... It was here, here in town. Well, who introduced you? Yeah, Mom, there isn't time for all this. i got to get married right away. I need the money right away. I see. Deke, do you love this girl? Yes, Mom, I do. And no matter what you say, even if I don't get the money from you, I'm going to marry her anyway. That's right, Michael. I read all that. Then she went right behind the kid's back. She and went to visit this girl. After having a detective agency, dig her address and check her out. We won't argue about her methods. But this is what she found. Yeah? Sissy Patterson? Yeah. I'm Deke Bryant's mother. Oh. Oh, well, hey, come on in, Mrs. Bryant. I'll, uh, I'll turn down the music here. Excuse the place. It's kind of a pigsty, huh? You see, I wasn't expecting no visitors. I can see that. Well, why don't you take a load off your feet? Come on, sit down. No, thanks, Miss Patterson. I don't think I'm going to be here that long. <laughs> I'm not going to mince words. I've had you checked out thoroughly. I know who you are and what you are. You've been in reform school. You've been booked twice for soliciting. And for all you look like a high school girl... You're five years older than Deke. All right. What do you want to marry him for, Sissy? I love the guy. I doubt it. If it's money, I must tell you, it'll be eight long years before he comes into any of his own. And I can tell you, if he marries you, he won't get one red cent from me. Yeah? Well, he better. He just better come across. Why? Because he got me in a family way. That's why. Well, I see. Uh, but it isn't only that. I... I really do go big for Deke, and I know he cares for me. He said you'd try to break us up, but I'm not going to let you, because I love him, you see? And I want to have his baby. I don't believe you. Well, you better. How much? Well, I'm not after dough. I keep trying to tell you I love him. But, Sissy, <laughs> if you really love Deke, you'll see it can't work for you. He has a college education to complete, pre-med school, medical school, internship. He won't be ready for marriage for years. And I suppose he won't be ready for a kid either. So what am I supposed to do? Get rid of it? I wouldn't ask any woman to do that. That's a question that's up to you. If there really is a child, I'll even take that on trust to save argument. I'm prepared to settle enough on you to make it worth your while to leave my son alone. Now, I have a certified check here for $100,000. If you accept it, I never want you to see Deke again. If you try to... I'll show him the canceled check. Don't make me do that. I don't want to hurt him that much. Am I boring you, Lucifer? You're just not scoring any points, Michael. The money didn't mean anything to her. She still interfered and broke her son's heart. And she drove that girl to suicide. You don't believe it was the mother's duty to keep these two apart? Anyone who tried to stand up against her, she squashed. Anything she wanted, she got. More power to her. Look at how she went after the old goat, Brian. Not so sure that her relationship with Mr. Bryant was quite that cold and opportunistic. Let's turn back the calendar and have a look. I wish you'd consider my proposition. No, I I don't like that word, Lillian. My, my offer, or what it really is, my plea to you. I don't see how I can, Mr. Bryant. Walter? All right, Walter. It isn't only me. I have the children to think of. I can't marry you, Lillian. Phyllis is an invalid. She's dying. I, I couldn't ask her for a divorce. As, as soon as I'm free, I promise to make you my wife. That might be a long time. That's why I want, selfishly, to have you now. While I can enjoy you. And appreciate you. I'll I'll get you an apartment, a house, whatever you want. We could be together almost as if we were man and wife. 
Almost. I'd set up trusts for the children, pay for their schooling, see them through college. What about your own children? Oh, it's a long time since they were children. They're all successful in their own right. And the business? You drive a hard bargain to them. I think it'll be safe enough in your hands. I'll... I'll teach you all I know. Walter, dear, I want to be honest. I'm not in love with you. I know that, darling. But if we should enter into an agreement like this, I... I promise I will try never to make you feel that I'm not. Friend, Michael, don't be a poor loser. A loser would not be me, but Mrs. Brown. What is it? We have some more company. Her daughter. Oh, I didn't see you there, Dee Dee. Oh, I just came in. Uh, hi, Dee. Uncle Bert. I'm glad you came, Dee. I was afraid you wouldn't come. I made it as fast as I could. How... How's Mom? We don't know. There's no word. Oh, Deke, I have a message for you. Oh, what? Well, the nice cop, you know, the one with the mustache let you ring me when you were busted? Oh, yeah, yeah, Sam Drayton, in Super Guy. Yeah, well, he called me just as I was leaving. He, he thought it was your number. Well, what did he want? Well, I guess he saw you or something after Sissy died. Oh, yeah, that's right. They had to, uh, uh to question everyone that knew her. Oh, well, I guess that's how come he knew so much about you and and her. So he said to tell you it wasn't Sissy. I mean, she didn't jump or anything. She was pushed. Well, how do they know? Well, they got the guy that did it. He was trying to cash a bank check that Mom must have given her. Well, who was he? I guess I've got to tell you, Deke. He was her husband. She not only took you, but I guess Mom, too. Sort of settles it, doesn't it, Lucifer? You mean you're going to press your claim to her? That's right. I oh, don't think I'm giving up mine, Michael. Well, then where, where does that leave us? We can scarcely cut her in half like Solomon's baby. I don't think that would satisfy anyone. Mm, I guess there's only one way out. Which is? We'll have to toss for it. I have a coin here. Oh, no, no, no. If it is to be that, we'll stick to one meeting in heaven. Can you be trusted? You ready? Hmm. All right. You call. Okay, but remember, no lousy miracles. Dear God, help me. Please. Give me one more chance. I will try to make up to my children. And baby. I don't want to die with all my sins. I am so afraid and lost. My lord, I ask you humbly to extend thy mercy to Lillian. Don't let her go alone into the dark night, not knowing that in spite of everything, we who are left behind love her and want her with us. Help her to find her way back to our hearts and to our lives. Your money where your mouth is? I don't think so. 
There's something not quite right about an angel gambling. You always have to figure on a sure thing, don't you? What does it matter? So long as justice is done. What is justice? Could a woman like Lillian Bryant return and change her personality? Once the shadow of death passed over, in the bright light of day, could her children bridge the generation gap that had split them away from her? Who knows? All one can know is this, that justice is so subtle a thing that to interpret it, all one needs is a heart. I'll be back shortly. I changed laxative. Nitalax tablets are different than the leading brands. Laxative users are switching to Nitalax, the predictable nighttime laxative. I take Nitalax before bed. Like most people, I normally get an uninterrupted sleep and the results I want in the morning. For most people like me, Nitalax usually doesn't cause cramps at night or diarrhea in the morning. Try Nitalax, the nighttime laxative worth switching to. Use only as directed when needed. Take your contact. Take it now. Give your cold to contact. I'm going to change your mind about nighttime cold medicine. You see, of all major medicines, only one works up to 12 hours against the cloggy virus symptoms that keep you awake. Only contact. One capsule's relief stays with you all through a long night's sleep, no matter what cold virus you take. Only contact. Give your cold to contact. Take only as directed. in that moment as we cross the great divide how many of us can stand the test of judgment run down the list of those seven deadly sins and ask yourself how many of them you can honestly say you have never succumbed to then balance the scales by remembering that bright angel who was just and merciful and trust him in the end in the fullness of love to tip the scales your way our cast included Ann Williams, Mandel Kramer, Russell Horton, and Brian Rayburn. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. Many years ago, your firm represented my father in a legal action, so I thought... Oh, uh, yes, I understand. My dear doctor, Peabody and Freeman is a very large firm. We have many clients, and I only joined the firm two years ago, so... I'm afraid your father's connection with us had no bearing on my seeing you quickly. No. Well, it doesn't matter. Uh, frankly, Mr. Faraday, I'm having a difficult time getting established in my profession. I don't know. Perhaps I've chosen the wrong location. Or at any rate, any spare money I might earn would be welcome. Have you ever been exposed to danger? Physical danger? No, I have not. Do you think you would be cool and collected at such a time? I hope so. I believe you would. My impression is, so far as personalities go, you may be the very man we are looking for. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.